Morning world, it is the 14th of February and all the uh, razzmatazz that that brings with it. And we've got a lovely moon in Aries and the moon is applying to the sun all day. So today should be a good day. It's actually quite a quiet day, astrologically speaking. So perhaps in that light, I'm just going to finish off a series I started a few weeks ago. I'm looking at the different aspects in the sky. Now I've covered the conjunction, the sextile, the square, the trine and the opposition. What I want to do today is look at the minor aspects. There's seven or eight of them. There's, there's, I'll deal with a really, I'm not even going to bother actually with the really small ones like the uh, semi-sextile of 30 degrees, one twelfth of a circle. Big deal. The decile, well, 36 degrees, one tenth of a cycle. The nonagen, one ninth of a circle, 40 degrees. I'm not really bothered by these. These are relatively small fry. There is the semi-square, one eighth of a circle, 45 degrees. <clears throat> and I sometimes give this if the angle is as tight as one degree, but no bigger. And it can be a minor little frustration or niggle, but I'm not really that bothered. There's the septile. This is an interesting one. Has a lot to. Uh, it's, it's, it's rather strange because septiles in astrology, one seventh of a circle, fifty-one degrees, fifty-one point twenty-six or something like that, has a great deal to do with sacred geometry as well, and the and the, and the nature of monuments on the Earth's surface, of which more another time, perhaps. But again, a septile in astrology, it's there, it's not really understood, it's only used in extreme cases, and it has a degree of magic about it. But if you really want to look at, there's two, there's two other minor aspects that really, three others, three others actually, there's the, se, ready? the sesiquiquadrate. <clears throat> that is an angle of 135 degrees, a square and a half. The semi-square is a niggle. The square is a problem. The square and a half is a fake, is, is like, that's done. You can't really change it. You've just got to live with it. And the opposition, you're stuck with it. And then there's two other angles. There's the inconjunction, 150 degrees, sometimes called the quincunx. It's when two planets are in different signs, different elements, different modes, different genders, completely nothing to do with each other. But it's not a major problem. It's like an itch you can't scratch. It's a niggle. It's a frustration. It's not worth the energy to sort it out, but neither is it something that's just going to go away? It's like two bits of sandpaper going up against each other. It's like the grit in the oyster that turns into the pearl. If you've got a lot of inconjunctions in your chart, you have to learn about that horrible word, compromise. And then there's the quintile, 72 degrees, discovered or used for the first time by, by Johann Kepler, to whom astrology owes a great deal. Um, one-fifth of a circle, the basis of the pentagram and the pentagon. And it is possible to make a pentagram, a five-pointed star, using only a compass and a ruler. I know, because I can do it. And there's an element of magic here, how to make five out of one. And when I say magic, I mean with a kind of small m. But where there's a quintile in your horoscope, if it's strong, like one degree, one and a half degrees, you've got a little bit of an edge. You've got a little bit of a glamour about you. And if you're aware of it, and if you choose to use it, because it's a latent, not a potent aspect, you can do very well. You can bring that little bit of magic into your life in a way that gives you that cutting edge, that split second advantage over the rest of the world. You have to learn how to recognize the quintile inside yourself and then how to be able to sort of hitch a ride with its magical flow. It's a lovely aspect and to my mind it's my favorite aspect of all. Okay, that's it for today. Aspect lesson over. Catch you tomorrow. Bye.